There's more than one way to skin a casino, and one of those ways is by maximizing their comp system. I'm gonna share with you seven tips so both recreational players and advantage players can maximize comps at the blackjack tables. I'm Colin from Blackjack Apprenticeship. I used to be a professional blackjack player. I've run teams responsible for beating casinos for roughly $4 million, and now I teach others how to beat blackjack at blackjackapprenticeship.com. When I was 24 years old, my wife and I went on a five-day completely paid trip to Las Vegas. Our airfare was covered, hotel, room, food, and we were picked up in a limo by one of those guys with a sign that said Mr. Jones on it. Our comped penthouse suite that overlooks the entire Las Vegas Strip had a TV that came out of the footboard of the bed when you pushed a button. There was another TV behind the mirror of the bathroom that had a bidet, of course. And for five days, all of our food, alcohol, and show tickets were completely covered by the casino. We were ordering room service several times a day just so that we could get premium bottles of liquor brought up to our room that we could bring home to friends as gifts. As a cheap, scrappy card counter, I couldn't believe what the casinos were throwing my way. It was all free, but that doesn't mean it didn't come without effort on my part. Let's get into my best tips to get the most out of the casinos. The first thing you need to decide is if you're going after the casino's money or the comps. You can definitely try to go after both, but if you don't want the casino knowing who you are, then you're gonna have to play unrated. And if you're playing unrated, you cannot go after the comps. Like I said, I'm a card counter. Casinos don't like us, so the moment they figure out that you're a threat to their bottom line, they're likely to refuse service to you. My friend and million dollar card counter loud and often has a hilarious story of a casino that wouldn't stop hassling him for ID so that they could make him a player's card. He's a pretty infamous card counter, so he doesn't want to give them his ID. Eventually, he turns to the pit boss, he says, look, if I want a free hot dog, I'll ask for a free hot dog, to which the entire table exploded, defending him to the pit. Okay, you're fine with playing rated, but how do you get the most value out of your comps? Well, it helps if you know how the casinos calculate your comps. They have a formula that takes your average bet size times what they expect their advantage against you to be then they're going to give you a percentage back of what they expect to make off of you. If they think you're worth $100 an hour to them, then they're gonna give you back something like $30 an hour in comp value. But there are a handful of ways to throw off their calculations to give you more comp value than they're intending to. For example, let's say at the blackjack table you bet between $25 and $200 on average, they're gonna put your average bet size at around $100 but they aren't watching you every single hand and adjusting it in their computers for every hand of blackjack. So if you start out with a $25 bet, they're probably gonna go to the computer and put in your average bet as $25. However, if the first bets they see you make are $200 bets, then they're gonna go over their computer and say that you're betting $200 a hand. How do you use this to your advantage? Bet the highest amounts that you bet when the pit boss is watching you. This is typically done when you first sit down at the table and hand them the player's card. They're gonna go to the computer and enter in a bet for you. Then they're gonna leave for a while and they'll come back periodically and adjust it. When the pit boss is near, have a higher average bet. When they walk away, drop your bet to a lower average bet. As a card counter, I didn't want to bet against the count. I wanted to bet what my count told me to bet. So what I would do is when I had those big bets out there, I'd say, hey Ron, am I getting rated? He'd see those larger bets out there and they'd go over to his computer and adjust the average bet size. Secondly, you remember me saying their formula is based on what they expect their advantage against you to be? You can use that to your advantage, pun intended, by having a better game than they expect you to have. If you're betting smaller, like under $100 a hand, they're probably not gonna bother evaluating the skill of your game. But if you're just a recreational blackjack player, make sure that you are perfect at basic strategy so that their advantage against you is as small as possible. Spending a few hours memorizing the charts to be perfect at basic strategy is well worth it when trying to game the comp system. Remember, the casino's formula is how much you're betting times what they believe their advantage against you to be times how many hands an hour they expect you to play. One of my blackjack heroes, Ian Anderson, tells in his book, Burning the Tables in Las Vegas, how he would get the casinos to inflate what they thought they were making off of him to his advantage. One of those ways involved that third part of the equation, how many hands they think you're playing an hour. When playing for the comps, he would choose tables that were full of players so that it would be very slow. That way, if the casino's formula is assuming you're playing 70 hands an hour, which is industry standard for casino's comp systems, but you're actually playing this full slow table that's only playing 40 hands an hour, 
then you're actually getting rated at double the rate of what you're actually making the casino. Of course, if you're a card counter or an AP, then this is hurting your EV because you're playing slower, you're not getting in as many rounds per hour. But if you're doing it for the comps, this can actually be to your benefit. Even more, if you're a card counter, you're playing with an advantage when the casino is rating you as a losing player. The risk, as I mentioned, is that if you're a card counter, the clock is ticking before the casino figures out that you're a winning player and they don't want you playing there. However, if you're primarily trying to get value out of the comps as a card counter, then you don't have to use as aggressive of a bet spread, especially if it's a low house edge game. I don't like getting into specifics on a public platform, but if this idea intrigues you and you're a card counter, use betting software like our pro betting software or CVCX to figure out if there's a tight bet spread that's break even or slightly positive that might fly under their radar so you can milk those comps. Blackjack Apprenticeship member JC Rocks 111 shared this story briefly in a podcast about a local casino that he beat for $150,000 plus another $100,000 in comp value. But please don't get me wrong, my default and the way that my teams have won millions of dollars is from aggressive card counting. Only use this technique if it's worth sacrificing EV at the tables for the value of the comps. Speaking of throwing off the casino's comp formula, legendary blackjack player and blackjack hall of famer Arnold Snyder has one of the best stories of throwing off the casino's comp formula. In his book, Radical Blackjack, Snyder tells a story of finding specific casinos that use BJ Survey, which is a blackjack analysis software that tracks the skill of the players. Normally this would be a bad thing for us, but Arnold knew what casinos were using it and he came up with a few strategic mistakes that looked really bad and made the casino think that he was a very bad blackjack player, but those mistakes didn't actually cost him much money at all. I don't want to give away the exact plays that he made, but the point is sometimes there are strategic mistakes that cost you very little, but make it look to the casino like you are a far worse player than you are, resulting in them either writing you off or significantly overcomping you. Here's a much more basic example. Blackjack deviations that card counters use often look like mistakes to an untrained surveillance operative. I've actually had surveillance friends tell me, yeah, I analyzed your play years ago and I determined you were not a winning player because you weren't following basic strategy. Of course I wasn't. I was using playing deviations. Players like Arnold Snyder and infamous card counter KC have used things like this to huge advantage in the comp system. This next tip is a really big one. You know that story I told at the beginning about all the free stuff, the airfare reimbursement, the comp suite, all the free room, food, beverage. Do you know how I got all that stuff? I got my ass kicked by the casino on the previous trip. As I'm losing, first they're offering me a free room and then some show tickets and a free dinner. They keep offering more stuff as I continue to get clobbered at the table. But I didn't get the really good stuff until the next trip. Does that mean you want to lose on purpose? Of course not. But when you're getting crushed, which happens to the best of us, that's when you want to ask for the world. The key is to let them know how badly you've been losing and that you would love something in return to keep you happy. My friends Brian and Amy are husband and wife that have played on my blackjack teams and not only have they made money from the blackjack tables, they also were great at maximizing their comps. They were regularly getting $5,000 gift cards from casinos on top of comp playoff game tickets and all of their room food and beverages covered. How they got so much in comps came down to their ability to work their casino host relationships. Comp City by Max Rubin is a book that has a lot of value in how to navigate this part of the game. Casinos don't want you to understand their comp system. They don't want you to think at all. They just want you to keep coming back and giving them your money. Here are five more things casinos don't want you to know. 